Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Record hospitalizations, the latest COVID-19 data. Concerns about learning loss as schools report a decline in registration. And later in sports, reggae boys to face Costa Rica in World Cup qualifier in less than eight hours. I'm Giovanni Dennis and here are the details. COVID-19 hospitalizations have set a new record. 786 people were admitted with the respiratory virus on Tuesday, up from 755 recorded on Monday. 50 are critically ill, while 122 are severely ill. 22,225 active cases of the virus are on the island. In the meantime, COVID-19 has claimed 20 more lives in Jamaica, pushing the death toll to 1,666. The deaths were recorded between August 12 and September 7. Nine of the deaths were recorded in St. Anne, four in Manchester, two each for the corporate area, St. Mary and St. Thomas, while St. Elizabeth recorded one death. One of the deaths was previously under investigation. The country also recorded 672 new cases from 2,129 tests. The total case count is 73,496. The positivity rate is now 42.2%. Days after the start of the new school year, more concerns about learning loss. Educators are this afternoon complaining that some of the same issues that plagued the sector last year may very well repeat. The issue was discussed on the Power 106's morning agenda this morning. Cody and Barrett reports. Just three days since the start of the new school year and already school administrators are sounding an alarm. Some principals are lamenting what they say is a decline in registration of new students. The principals say the last academic year was chaotic and now fears that the challenges of last year may repeat. The students are my greatest concern because there has been no significant narrowing of the digital divide, particularly in rural Jamaica. And while some schools are still reeling from the impact of the pandemic on the education system, principals and teachers are burning the candles at both ends to address the growing issue of learning loss among students. The matter has prompted principal of Mona High School in St. Andrew, Kevin Jones, to take a position. We looked at the report, I single-handedly, well, not single, myself and the team members, we sat down and we looked at the report and the students who had um, excessive absences and lateness and low averages and passing only two or three subjects out of 10 or 14 or 16, they are now repeating their grades. And as for principal of Yala's High School in St. Thomas, Mark Malava, he believes the matter of learning loss is one that needs to be addressed urgently. The learning gap is significant. The research is suggesting that an entire generation will be left behind um, if we do not do anything at this point in time to, 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 to curtail or cauterize that. Cody Ann Barrett, TVJ News. And still on education, the opposition is again criticizing the government for its approach to restarting face-to-face -face classes. Spokesperson on education, Dr. Angela Brown burke argues that the stipulations outlined for face-to-face -face classes are unrealistic and unjustified. O'Shane Masters has the details. At Monday's start of a new school year, Education Minister Favel Williams indicated that the resumption of face-to-face -face classes hinges directly on the number of students in a school's student population vaccinated against COVID-19. And that's why we've said to our schools, when you get to that 65% or higher mark, which is the national average as per the Ministry of Health and Wellness, we will look to bring in students back into school again. But the opposition education spokesperson, Dr. Angela Brown Burke, is rubbishing the idea. She believes students will not get to that level of vaccination anytime soon, as the general population is far behind that number. The country is far from getting to 65%. I'm not sure if 65% is a magic number. She believes the education ministry should be more eager to resume face-to-face -face classes in light of the devastating effect online challenges had on the sector last year and seems set to have a similar impact this year. 
if there are no vaccines for children under 12, what that means is when the ministry determines that children can go back face to face, there can be no vaccine requirement. If that is so, the question we need to ask ourselves is what would the ministry implement to keep our children safe while they go to school for those who are under 12 because I want to submit that the same things we're doing for children under 12 we can also do for children over 12 who are not vaccinated. She's also questioning the 65% stipulation since both vaccinated and unvaccinated students can contract and spread COVID-19. So, you know, it, it really doesn't make sense. And then the real issue for me as well is that in Jamaica in 2021, if you are not doing face-to-face -face for the majority of our Jamaican students, it is not working. If it is not working, the Ministry of Education has a responsibility to find a way to educate our children and to educate it safely. Oshane Masters, TVJ News. The man who police believe is responsible for throwing another man in a pit earlier this year was apprehended in a snap raid in Spanish Town St. Catherine on Tuesday. Javon Keyes reports. Shelter Rock, as its name appears, is no safe place according to the police, not for residents at least. It's home to Black Man, the alleged leader of a faction of the Klansman gang in Spanish Town St. Catherine. In the last few days, the community recorded a vicious killing of a teen, 15-year-old Kevin McKenzie, who reportedly was beheaded on Monday, August 30. The St. Catherine North Police Division released the names of a few of the persons of interest last week, but no one has since turned up at the police station. Now, the cops have launched a major manhunt in the community and neighboring areas for those allegedly responsible for the violence. We are now conducting a major operation in the shelter of Jones Avenue and Backland area, Spanish Town Police District, where we are in search of men from sections of the black, um, Klansman faction, particularly black man and um, Breda. Head of Operations at the St. Catherine North Police Division, Deputy Superintendent of Police Linroy Edwards, says while in the space, the police nabbed the man they believe is allegedly responsible for dumping another man in a pit earlier this year. The story which shocked the nation back in May saw an elderly man being pulled out of a 55-feet pit after he was left for dead. He has a walking disability, but does, that does not prevent him from being one of the top tier member of the gang is wanted in relation to an elderly gentleman who was dropped in a pit a few months ago and left for dead for a few days. There's also extortion, murder and shooting. The officer says Shelter Rock, which is a stone's throw away from the Spanish Town business community, has become a safe haven for criminals and its informal settlement breeds criminal activities as well and makes it difficult to police. However, DSP Edwards says the police will be hunting them down. We have the capacity, the capability, the resources and the motivation and we'll be continuing our relentless pursuit of these criminals as long as they decide to live a life of crime and to make people's lives, uncom lives uncomfortable. Javon Keyes. TVJ News. And it's now time for a break, but please stay with us. We'll have much more stories when you return. Welcome back. We're continuing the news. More than a week after the passage of Tropical Storm Ida, residents in sections of Clarendon are still counting their losses. Anthony Log explains. The impact of Tropical Storm Ida will forever be etched in the minds of this family in an area known as Nine Turns in Clarendon. I never experienced something like this before. Everything gone. We just feel like... This dwelling, which was once home to the family of eight, was among the most affected by landslides and flooding. Tanisha Brown believes things would have turned tragic if she wasn't standing outside her house. Everybody would have been dead. Because when I went outside and I saw that water coming off the hill, I was like, Mommy, I have to go up there and check it out. When I go up there... I come back down like about 10 minutes after me and my nephew. That was it. I'm going here, I pass the kitchen side. My sister closed the door. 
I'm here something go shh. And by the time I look around, I start the apple tree shake. So I say, sister, run, it come. But that did not stop the tree from landing on their roof. Luckily, everyone made it out, but not without challenges. A relative was trapped inside the kitchen. The stove and the fridge locked together, locked the sister in the kitchen. And she called, Tumpa, Tumpa, come for me. But nobody could reach him. And I run back inside of the house and push her some bed for me because I go. Me couldn't reach to him. And his sister thought, ball out, ball, help, 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 help. And people thought to run in and then, then come in and take the saw and cut the kitchen top and get out my daughter. The storm is over and most residents in the community might be seeing clearer now, but not for this family of eight who've been displaced. For me to sleep at night, it's hard. Because every time I lay down, my sister just call me. Come take me out, come take me out. I make three attempts to take her out and I couldn't take her out. Because the landslide keep coming down. So it's very frustrating. They're desperately seeking some assistance. Anthony Log, TVJ News. And it's now time for the Business Minute. Here's Cody and Barrett. Proven Investments Limited, a PIL, announced on Monday that it has sold its 20% stake in Dream Weekend Entertainment. The entertainment business has attracted some controversy following the recent staging of an event in Negril and the rise in COVID-19 infections since then. However, CEO of Proven, Christopher Williams, revealed that the disposal of the 2,500 shares was concluded in June, months ahead of the Negril party. The transaction is said to have recouped the initial investment of roughly 500,000 US dollars, which Proven paid for Dream shares in February 2019 before the pandemic capped the entertainment sector. And in the region, Guyana says it expects to deposit more than 500 million US dollars into the Natural Resources Fund, NRF, by the end of this year. Natural Resources Minister Vikram Barrett said the country is also due to export a million barrels of oil in three weeks and another million before the end of the year. He added that both exports will have an average revenue of 70 million US dollars. And here now is a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In this evening's health report, we look at COVID-19 and the impact it has on persons with prostate cancer. We have definitely seen a reduction in the number of men coming into the screen and the opportunities for screening have lessened as well. So it has de definitely negatively impacted our ability to screen men for prostate cancer. It has also negatively impacted the treatment of men with established prostate cancer because our elective operating lists um, have been decreased in, in frequency and number. And so we have less opportunities to operate on men with prostate cancer during the pandemic. That's the health report in primetime news at seven. And now for today's healthy living tip. Maintain a balanced diet, get some sun and get screened. Now for the top regional and international stories, here's O'Shane Masters. In the region, a 56-year-old woman who was charged with entering St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister, Dr. Ralph Gonzalves, on August 5, has been slapped with another charge. The new charge against Anna Mae Lewis comes as the prosecution failed to comply with the court's order to disclose to the defense by August 31 the evidence against Lewis in connection with the charge that she allegedly wounded the Prime Minister. Lewis was arraigned at the Kingstown Magistrates Court on August 9 on a charge that on August 5, she unlawfully and maliciously wounded Dr. Gonzalves, who had to be flown to neighboring Barbados for medical treatment. Further afield, at least 41 prisoners have been killed and at least eight injured after a fire tore through an overcrowded prison block on the outskirts of the Indonesian capital, Jakarta. The blaze started in the early hours of Wednesday morning in Block C of Tagarang Prison. The block housed inmates being held for drug-related offences and had a capacity for 122 people. And a powerful earthquake struck the southwest of Mexico late Tuesday, causing widespread shaking as far away as Mexico City and killing at least one person. The United States Geological Survey said the 7.0 magnitude quake struck 2.5 miles or 4 kilometers east-northeast of Los Organas de San Agustin, about 8 miles from the Pacific Coast Beach Resort city of Acapulco. 
It was measured at an initial depth of 7.8 miles or 12.6 kilometers. At least 92 aftershocks were recorded, including one with a magnitude of 5.2. And that's it for the top regional and international stories. I'm Machine Masters. And we now head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports support. Welcome back. It's now time for Midday Sports. I'm Simon Preston. Reggae Boys defender Damien Lowe has described this evening's clash against Costa Rica as a must-win game. The Reggae Boys will be hoping to end their two-game losing streak in the CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers in San Jose this evening. The Jamaicans lost 2-1 to Mexico and 3-0 to Panama in their opening two games, while Costa Rica drew nil all with Panama and fell 1-0 to Mexico. They're a very experienced team. They've been to what, maybe three, four World Cup cycles with the same squad. So um, we have to put that in mind. They know how to play World Cup football and World Cup qualifying football. But yes, they haven't been getting points on the board. If we win the game, we're going to go in third place. Both of us need points. To be honest, we need to make things right, you know, as a nation. You know, we, 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 we need to get, get out the blocks. We need to get win, uh, points on the board. We need to get a win, and it has to start today. Kickoff is at 8 o'clock Jamaica time. Jamaica's 23 member squad for this encounter reads Andre Blake, Dylan Barnes, Dennis Taylor, Corey Burke, Alvas Powell, Damian Lowe, Devon Williams, Kimar Lawrence, Shamar Nicholson, Junior Flemings, Adrian Mariapa, Anthony Grant, Javon Watson, Ricardo Morris, O'Neill Fisher, Blair Turgot, Norman Campbell, Tyreek McGee, Lamar Walker, Peter Lee Vassal, Javan East, Romario Williams, and Javane Brown. Double Olympic sprint champion Elaine thompson Hero says that she'll only be competing in the 100 meters on day two of the Wanda Diamond League meet in Zurich on Thursday. The 29-year-old was due to compete in both events, but she says her focus will be on the Blue Ribbon event. I was thinking about it, but because I've done so much this entire season, so I had really one double at the Olympic. I'm just giving some other people chances to highlight themselves. So I'm sharing this time. <laughs> to be honest, I would say the 200 because I ran 21.53, not getting enough recovery from running two rounds the previous day. So I would say the 200 more than the 100 because the 100 you have to nail that start. And my start is not that perfect yet. So I would say the 200. Meanwhile, Daniil Thomas Dodd, who was Jamaica's only competitor on day one of the meet, finished fifth in the women's shot put with a throw of 18.38 meters. And finally, this afternoon, the Jamaica Tallowers were restricted to 169 for eight off their 20 overs against the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots in match 21 of the CPL at Warner Park. Shamar Brooks top scored with 43, while Captain Rovman Powell made 37. Andre Russell also chipped in with 28. Dominic Drakes, John Ross Jagosar, and Fawad Ahmed took two wickets each for the Patriots. At sports time, the Patriots had reached 121 for five after 17 overs. The Talawas are searching for their third win of the season. At six o'clock, the Guyana Amazon Warriors will battle the St. Lucia Kings. And that is it for your midday sports report. I'm Simon Preston. Giovanni, it is over to you. Is it too late for the reggae boys, Simon? A lot of people are criticizing their performances so far. Your thoughts? No, not over just yet. Ten games to go, so still a lot of football to be played. But certainly a loss this evening would certainly put more dent and put the Jama Jamaicans deeper into the mire. Heavy criticisms for Theodore Tapo Whitmore. Your thoughts? It, it was a difficult uh, hand for him because he came back to um, on national soil after Mexico with just one training session. So it is always going to be difficult to get everybody together for that Panama encounter. But we have to move forward and the focus is on Costa Rica this evening. All right. Well, thank you so much for those analysis, Simon Preston there. And that's the Midday News. I'm Giovanni Dennis. Join us at 7 for Primetime News. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a good afternoon.